Hey everybody, um, so I just wanted to make another video about circumcision. Um, if you couldn't tell by my last video, um, it probably wasn't very obvious, but I am actually opposed to circumcision. I don't think it's the parent's choice, and I'm opposed not necessarily to circumcision itself, but to routine infant circumcision. I think if a man wants to get it done as an adult, then more power to him, but I'm against parents doing it or allowing doctors to perform it on newborn babies or young children. Basically anybody who doesn't do it by their own choice at the age of 18. Um, so today I wanted to talk about one of the biggest arguments that we hear from pro-circ people and basically just discuss why that argument is illogical and just doesn't make any sense. The biggest argument that I always hear at, in defense of circumcision, oh my goodness, really little boy, can we sit here quietly? Okay, look, look at your little bear. Okay, sorry about that. The biggest argument that we hear in defense of circumcision is that it's cleaner, it prevents infections, STDs, and prevents penile cancer. Now, even if that were true, which it really isn't, I mean, the benefits of that are completely small, but even if it were true, it's just illogical and it's a disgusting double standard that is applied as well. So first, let's start with a little cancer issue. A man's chance of getting cancer, penile cancer, in his lifetime is 1 in 100,000. So it's pretty small. Whereas a woman's chance of getting, for example, breast cancer, um, 1 in 8. That's huge. Compared to 1 in 100,000, 1 in 8 is pretty huge. So, I mean, we have Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we have the Susan G. Komen Research Center people, we have so much dedicated to finding out more about breast cancer and preventing it because it's such a huge issue and it's hurting so many women. Well, why don't we use the same logic that we apply for circumcision to breast cancer, I mean, we're doing circumcision to prevent penile cancer, right? That's one of the arguments. So then why don't we just do double mastectomies on newborn girls? I mean, that would solve the problem, right? That would make life so much easier. We wouldn't have to worry about them getting breast cancer. I mean, problem solved, right? It doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, why would we do that to our newborn girls? Why would we just remove their breast tissue? It just it doesn't make sense. And so the same applies with baby boys. It doesn't make sense. The chances are your son will not develop penile cancer. So why are you going to remove a healthy, functioning organ mm -hmm. when you just don't need to? It doesn't make sense. Um, another thing is that it prevents infections and UTIs and things like that. Again, it just doesn't make sense because with that logic, you can apply that logic to any other body part that's prone to infection. You know, maybe you get a lot of toe fungus or athlete's foot. Why don't we just chop off your toes when you're born? You don't have to worry about that, right? No. Instead, we give you antibiotics, we do creams, you know, things like that. And any other sort of infection will, you do other treatments. Amputation, in any case is usually the last resort when there's nothing else that can be done, no other treatments have been found, you amputate whatever it is, you know? So why is it that with a healthy functioning organ that we don't even know if your child's ever going to have any infections, yet you still are willing to have the foreskin amputated to prevent something that's not even there yet? And another thing is the fact that circumcision has so many risks, and it can cause death, it can be botched, which will forever alter your baby's penis negatively, as if circumcision isn't enough of a negative alteration. We have that. I mean, I would much rather my son have a UTI every now and then than him possibly die or have a botched circumcision. I mean, that's just me. I, I've had UTIs, and yeah, they suck, but I personally would much rather have a UTI than have had been circumcised as a child, you know, but without my consent. So I give my son that same right, you know. I would much rather he have a UTI. <laughs> really, if I had to choose, hmm, UTI or botched circumcision or even just a healthy, normal, well, not healthy, but a, mm -hmm. I can't even say successful mm -hmm. circumcision because to me circumcisions aren't successful, but uh, 
circumcision the way it's meant to go, I guess, the way circumcisions are meant to happen, I would much rather he have an infection than have to go through a circumcision. I, that's just me. So the fact that parents are doing it in order to prevent these infections, it just doesn't make sense because you're putting your child at risk for death. And women are much more prone to UPIs and bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections. And yet, female circumcision has been outlawed. So why don't we give that same respect to our sons? I don't, I don't understand it. So that argument there is completely illogical because we can apply that to any and all body parts that become ill and amputate all those body parts that are prone to infection, but we don't. Um, Women are more prone to genital infections, yet we don't circumcise them. So, I mean, if you're still pro surf even after hearing that, I don't understand. Um, there's no really logic going on there, obviously. But um, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. And um, I do plan on making more intactivist videos, um, basically talking out against circumcision and hopefully in my lifetime I will see this procedure banned or illegalized but um <laughs> I gotta go because he's getting hungry so thank you for watching and um I'll be making more videos about this topic later on bye